Now we have an activity where we take the web service created in the previous section and convert it to an API. Here in the Build tab, I'm going to add a new folder for this section, Section 3, Import Process. Now we're going to be working with and altering prospect tracking from the previous section, so we'll copy the process from its original folder into this new folder. So here in the Section 2 folder, I'll select Prospect Tracking Web Service and Copy, choosing Section 3, Import Process folder. Now I want to open that version of the process here in the Section 3 folder and change the name to Prospect Tracking API. This will help me distinguish it from the other copy. Now, in order to simplify the integration scenario just for the purpose of this course and to demonstrate the use of query parameters and also to stay within the training account's license counts, we're going to edit this process slightly. So I'm going to remove the decision shape, map, database, and return document shapes here. And I'll connect the Salesforce connector to the return document shape. So the API in this scenario will perform a simple get. We only need to retrieve data from Salesforce in order to demonstrate the API's capabilities. And this is a recommended practice to keep endpoints within an API simple, which helps with troubleshooting. We have the Web Services Server Connector, the Salesforce connector, and then a return document shape. Now, previously, we were specifying the parameter with a static value of prospect, but we want to look at how you can use query parameters instead. So I'll change the type to dynamic process property, and then for the property name, enter query underscore, which denotes a query parameter, type. I can save and close the process. Now there's already a Salesforce connection loaded into the Salesforce connector shape, but in order to remain within the provisioned number of connection licenses, I'm going to choose the connection from the previous activity. So I'll open the connector, remove this connection, and instead from section two, I'll select Boomi Training Salesforce. Click OK, and now I can click Save and Close. Now that the process has been configured appropriately, I can move on to create the API component and then import that process into the API. So here in my Section 3 folder, I'll select New Component, change the type to API. You'll notice that the default type is API Service, a little bit later, we'll choose API proxy. And for the component name, we'll call this get prospects. Now here in the general settings tab, I'm going to add some data under publish metadata. This will be published when we publish the API. So I'll call this Salesforce prospects and give it a version number of 1.0. Optionally, you can add some description here. So retrieves current prospects from Salesforce account object. And then importantly, I'll specify the base API path. So we'll say prospects v1. This base URL path does need to be unique for each environment that the API component is deployed to. Now I'm ready to import an endpoint. So I'll click here and then choose use an existing process. I'll select prospect tracking API. 
and I'm going to add that to rest. So the process has been imported. I can see it here under actions, the method is get, and that's going to be handled by this process. I don't need to make any changes, but if I did, I could come in here and edit the endpoint, changing the resource path, adding an optional path to the resource, adding optional headers. But I can just save and close the API. Now both the process and the API service component are designed and configured. It is time to package and deploy your process. Your activity guide contains the details you need to enter for package components and deploying your process. The video will continue with the step after your process is deployed. Pause the video now to package and deploy your process. Next, I'll come to Atom Management, the Atom Cloud Shared Web Server Settings. To enable the API component, I need to update the Atom's Shared Web Server Settings. So I will change the API type from Intermediate to Advanced. Click Save to update the Shared Web Server Settings. I don't need to add another user. I can use the default user from before. But now it's time to call the API. So in this activity, we're going to demonstrate calling the API using Postman. You could also use Advanced REST Client, SOAP UI, or even the HTTP client from the previous activity that we created in Atomsphere. So I have opened Postman and I'm ready to configure this request. I'll start by entering the URL. Now the base URL for all API requests is coming here from the shared web server settings. And then the remainder of the resource path can be found in the API component. So open another tab here for the build tab open the API, and then here under the rest, edit endpoint, here's the remainder of that API path. So I'll copy that and append it. Now I do need to enter that query parameter as well. So here I'll enter question mark type equals prospect. Now for the authorization, I will choose basic, and then I've entered my username and password from the shared web server settings. I'll hit send. And here's the response, edge communications. And if I scroll down a little more, we'll get to the second prospect gene point. This video concludes now, but you can follow the activity guide to complete all of the steps on your own.